In this random grasshopper tutorial, we want to model this parametric stair in grasshopper, and you can see that I can change the size of the X and the Y, which is basically the box this stair is confined in. So if I look at it from the top, uh, you can see that this is the X and the Y. Uh, we can also change the step height, which is the distance between the steps and also the step count. So the number of step count can also be controlled here. Uh, okay, before I get started from scratch, let me uh, explain a little bit about the algorithm and what we want to do in Grasshopper. In Rhino, if I just draw a simple box, this is going to help you understand what's happening. Uh, let me just hit the control shift and select these faces and get rid of them. That, that's the exact thing, uh, steps we're going to take in Grasshopper. I'm going to delete this. Okay, this is the confined box. This is basically the axis we're going to work from here to here. That's exactly what we want to do. Okay. Uh, the first thing is to actually uh, assume that we want to rotate from zero degrees up here to 180 degrees because we want to reach the next level. So in Grasshopper, what we're going to do, uh, and be sure to watch the video till the end, is to draw a line. Okay. And uh, let me just show you some tricks in Rhino, maybe it's useful for you. I'm going to use the Array uh, Polar tool here. So let's just say Array Polar, select the object. Okay, uh, the center of uh, the polar area is here. The number is maybe I want 15. And the angle to fill is 180 degrees because I want to... Uh, Put it up on the next level. You can also use this Z offset. So I'm going to say the Z offset. We can just make it a little bit smaller to put it uh, on the axis. Exactly in Grasshopper we can control this. So in Rhino it's a little bit tricky, but I just wanted to show you what's going to happen. Okay. Uh, the next part is that I'm going to put this uh, point on here. In Grasshopper we just put a plane, so it's completely accurate but here in Rhino I just wanted to show you uh, how we're going to do that so remember that this is the steps we're going to take uh, in Grasshopper. Let me just get rid of these lines and show you what's going to happen to produce those steps. Uh, then what we want to do is to use the revolve command here okay the start of the axis is going to be these points exactly let me just hit the control key and bring it up and the start angle is zero and the revolution maybe 20 degrees for example you can see I can produce something like that again for this one I'm going to hit the control key start is zero 20 degrees and so on so we're going to use this technique in grasshopper again 0 20 and we'll have these steps uh, the next step is to just uh, trim those surfaces from the box just show you in Rhino because it's really fast and easy uh, okay it's going to give you these steps and we're going to do that in Grasshopper till we reach the end some tricks we have to use we have to know some tools in Grasshopper so be sure to watch the video till the end so we we'll reach this uh, parametric stair in Grasshopper we can control uh, all of the parameters okay so the first step here is are producing the box and I'm going to go to the surface and go to the primitive uh, you can actually draw anything you want uh, for example I can say uh, domain box I think this one is better because uh, we can actually draw a box by XYZ uh, before we get started if you're new to our channel welcome uh, uh, like this video subscribe and you can also watch this playlist up here which is about grasshopper why you should learn it and a one hour video uh, so be sure to check that out and get started with that if you don't know anything about grasshopper and you're new to our channel and also if you want to learn grasshopper advanced lessons uh, more techniques more projects we're going to model in grasshopper you can check out our course the power course lessons I'm going to put it up here so you can also enroll in our course to learn more uh, okay, for example, this is the XY plane. Uh, this input is a domain, okay? It says minus 2 to 2, but if you give it a number slider, for example, just a number slider for X, 
give it here. You can see that you can control the x because it's going to go from zero to that number. So that's num that number is going to go from zero to that number, okay? And let's just copy this for the x, y, and z. So based on your project, remember that you have to change these numbers uh, and your units, so it's going to make sense. Okay, and the next step is to draw that line from here to here. So we can use it for the base of the steps. So I'm going to go here in the surface and deconstruct this box. Okay, but first let's get rid of, uh, I mean, we need to get rid of these faces. Just a little trick and an exercise in Grasshopper. How can we get rid of them? It's easy, just uh, hit on the area of the surface. It's going to give you some points. Go to the display and use this point list tool. I usually use this technique because uh, I can figure it out, especially for those things that are fixed. Let me just bake this. I can find the number. So it says four, zero, and five. So I have to get rid of these numbers. Uh, I can simply delete this, go to the sets, and by using this list item, I can select those spaces I need. So, for example, uh, uh, sorry, I have to go to the sets and go for call index. Instead of list item, I want to delete these numbers. So you can also find it up here and say two forward slashes, enter to have the panel. We need to get rid of zero, four and five okay be sure to right click on the panel and select uh, multi-line data that is really important so because if you don't uh, you can see that there is an error so remember you have to put it as a data not not a text okay uh, that's how it's going to give you exactly what we had in rhino you can see that we have a uh, confined space for the stairs. Okay, let's go here. Uh, we also want to draw a line from here to here, so we can go to list item this time and select the vertices. This is the first vertex. I guess that it's going to go like this, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So uh, I can say 0, and why not just give it a five? Uh, if it's just one data, you don't need to click on multi-line data. So if it's one, that's okay. But if it's two or more, you have to be sure it's like a multi-line data. Okay, this is going to be a line. So I'm going to go to the curve and select a line with two points from here to here. Okay, here we have this. Okay, uh, assume that this is the uh, maximum height you have for your project based on the building you have. You want to go from this floor to the next floor. Uh, what we want to do is to divide this into the number of steps we have. So remember this is the Z, the height, Z, the size, okay. Uh, I'm going to go here and go to the division in the curve section here and use this perpendicular frame. You can also find it here. And I'm going to divide this uh, curve into frame frames. Why? Because we need to intersect these frames with this line so we have uh, the exact same distance on each of the points on this line. Okay, so we have to again set list item, pick up the edges we need is okay this is the first edge let's just use a trick reverse the list okay that was a good one because when you reverse the list chances is the first index is maybe uh, vertical I usually use that but if you don't uh, want to use this technique it's like 0 1 2 3 uh, probably it's 4 so I can just say Four in the index. No, it's like zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's eight. So that reverse technique is also good, and you can use it. Okay, 
not really important. We can give it to the perpendicular frame. And now you can see that this is dividing the, uh, this line into 10 capped. So what is the step size you want? For example, if you want to check that out, you can say uh, if I divide this uh, height to 12, let me just put that as uh, 3 to maybe 30 and name this count. Make this a little bit smaller and go to the math. Uh, make a simple division and connect a, pull, a panel to this. This is going to say the step height or we can say riser okay this is the uh, riser the height of the riser and you can see that by changing this number this is going to give you different so uh, you have two options uh, either you have the riser and the counts and it's going to give you the maximum height you will get or you have the height and you want to divide it into series of steps and get a good riser so I just uh, uh, let it go and you can select whatever you want and now we have uh, 15 so if I give this to the uh, count let me just put that into like three uh, you can see it's going to have give you one two three and four that is because when you divide a curve into three sections so this is like one two three you will have an extra one. So uh, what you can do here is to go to the count, go to right click expression and say x minus one. You have to write it based on the x and this will give you exactly the number of steps you need. Okay, now that we have these frames, it's time to intersect that line with the frames, intersection, and in the mathematical you could see the line plane because we want to intersect that line with a series of plane line plane and we're good to go you can see that we will have these uh, points with the same height that is really important because these stairs have to have the same height for your project okay that is the count uh, the next step is to make those lines and uh, actually make them exactly as I explained with uh, small degrees until we reach this one which is like that right and this one is like this that is what we have to do uh, how can we do that uh, first of all let's say that we draw a line in the x direction for all of them so I'm going to go here in the curve and select this SDL tool. This is really great because it draws from start, which is a point. Uh, okay, let's just draw a point, a direction, which is D, and a length, which we can define. Okay, the start direction, the starting is going to be this point. The direction, if I give it an X, and the length, for example, 50. Okay, you can see these lines. But first, before we go forward, uh, based on what we used here, I mean, if we use this edge or this edge, let me explain this a little bit. If I bake the edges and use this analyze direction, you can see that this is from uh, up to down and this is like the reversed direction, right? So based on the edge you use to produce those perpendicular frames, uh, the points are going to go from, let me just delete these, from this direction down or from this direction to up. So that is really important. First of all, if we want to see them, we can go to the, again, display, point list, and bake it. So you can see it's from up to down. So I'm going to just simply right click on the point, reverse the direction, and we are good to go. So that is the first step. Be sure that it's from uh, going up, from down to up, bottom to up. Okay, just delete this one. Uh, the next part is the length has to be something related to the x direction. So if I give this 
like in the x direction uh, i'm going to go from the parms menu take this number container put my x inside it bring it here and give it to the leg the problem here is that when we want to rotate these lines in this direction it's not going to reach the surface so why not just put it like length expression like two times x and be sure that it's bigger than the confined area okay the next part is that we have to rotate each of these lines in the direction we need so why not just say rotate uh, 3d I usually use the rotate 3d because it's completely advanced and you can use it for anything so I'm going to use the rotate 3d I want to rotate these lines the center of rotation is actually these points that's it the axis of rotation is Z because we want to rotate these lines in the Z direction right and angle into degrees okay just turn this off and if I say 20 degrees, you can see that this is going to rotate these lines on the degrees I want. It's actually sweeping the plane. You can see it's rotating. And if I go to the front view, you can see it's actually cutting the right things we need here. Okay, so we have to go for a step here and see what it goes. Uh, so what I want to do here is to um, say we need a range. If you don't know about range, I'm going to put up the tutorial here so you can check it out. And let's say it's like 0 to 1. We need 180 degrees, right? So I'm going to say 180 degrees. We don't want to change that, so maybe we just put that in a panel. 180 remember that it doesn't need a multi-line data because it's one and uh, if I give it to the domain the steps has to be based on the count so let me just delete these things uh, 11 give it to the steps uh, we have 11 lines the output of the range is 12 because it's actually going to divide 0 to 180 degrees uh, if you give it like three, three different sections, it's going to give you four numbers, right? It's going to give you one extra. So why not just go here and say expression x minus one and give it to the angle, okay? And you can see it's completely rotating those lines in the right uh, direction. Remember, if we don't reverse this, pointlets is going to give us something like that, which is wrong. So be sure to check that out too. And we are good to go. We will have these lines on the right direction. Okay, a problem here is that, okay, the problem here is that these lines, for example, if I bake them, we wanted to revolve these lines around an axis. So just put that from zero to 20 degrees. That's going to happen for all of these lines. The last one is going to be like this. So it's like, 0 20 degrees it's going to go outside the box right but in the base project which I have defined we have the last one is the step which goes to the next floor so we have to fix this little trick we have to use and uh, the problem is that we don't want to reach 180 degrees it has to go a little bit back uh, so it has to be something like there okay instead of 180 degrees we want to see uh, how much rotation each step has, right? So I'm going to say 180 degrees. You can see that this is basically 18. Each step is going up by 18 degrees. But we can have that by simply say math division, divide this by the number of count we had here. And uh, remember that 18 degrees thing. Uh, example is uh, if I just minus that 180 from this one I'll just give you a explanation uh, minus 180 to this it's going to be like this right 
that is going to go back and this is the range you can see it's like 16.3 so if I let's check that out rotate this revolve this like 0 to 16.3 I guess uh, you can see it's completely okay so be sure to check that uh, is the data okay in Rhino with some simple tricks like this because if that 18 degree was correct we had to go here and say instead of div uh, division of 11 divided by 12 and those things okay so uh, what happened is that instead of 180 degrees I found the angle here and made it like 180 minus that degree okay so when it revolves it goes to the exact step we want so that was the trick we used and now we are good to go we just have to produce those stairs I'm going to say revolve okay let's just find them from the surface command because it's easier in the surface we have uh, free form and uh, let me just find it down here we have revolution revolution we want to revolve these lines uh, the axis is it's not a uh, vector you can see it's a line so we have to give it a line uh, why not we just use the SDL again the direction the point was like here the direction is by default the Z that's okay you can see that this is what we have the default SDL is in the direction of Z and one length so we can use this as the axis okay now we need a domain which is in radians so I'm going to say use this simple tool is called radians and it's going to convert degrees into radians okay that is exactly uh, we need exact degrees as here you can see it's like 0 16 32 and up to that so we have to uh, give that number to this I guess so I hope that this number is correct check that out yes and well now we have that completely on the edge we are sure that that's correct and we have to check it out always to see if we are doing things okay when you give that radiance here you can see it's going to go from zero to that number for all of those curves which is completely what we need so that is how we can do those steps and the next step is to just uh, trim those extra things in Rhino, the grasshopper I mean. Rhino is really easy, just have to go to the top and get rid of these planes and you can see that we will have them exactly confined but for now we have to go in grasshopper and do that. Uh, I have used different techniques but what I found was really uh, easy and good was that to find the planes uh, I mean find the rectangles inside each of these planes and then find the intersection between them let me explain more about what I mean uh, in these planes we can intersect uh, this B rep plane the box with these planes so if I go and pick up the box as the B rep and intersection with these planes okay we will have these curves like that and you can see that they are in groups so be sure to uh, let me simplify this so it's going to just simplify the data okay put it in the curve so you can see exactly what I want to do okay the next thing is to go to the intersection and use this uh, shape uh, intersection okay it means that what is the intersection between the box and those just simply give a curve to the revolution and it's going to extract the borders this is also another technique I use okay 
Uh, now we have to find the intersection shape region intersection. But remember, this is in groups. This is not in groups. I usually graft and simplify this. If you don't know about graft and simplify and those things, watch up this tutorial. But now we will have completely the same groups. Okay. And let's check that out. I hope so that's correct. If we have problems, we just have this one. So let's give that plane also. We need to give it a plane because it doesn't have a plane. So why not give this planes? Let me put it in a plane and graft. Simplify that. We want those region intersection to be in these planes. Okay. Uh, I got it because the plane again is let me show you by this what I mean. the plane is starting from uh, from the top to down so again we have to reverse it so let me just fix this by giving it a reverse this is the bug of the algorithm and then graft and simplify put it here because you can't combine reverse and graft at the same time okay that's it that's all we have to do i guess and yes that's completely correct if i give it a surface we will have the steps so that was how we can use grasshopper tools you can see it's really easy we have this line here as the axis we can bake this in one layer for example layer one uh, I can bake this one into layer two and bake this line into layer three for example if we go in I know here we go uh, we can select the layer one Using the gumball, just give this a little bit of thickness, maybe. Give this a pipe. I don't know if one is good, but for example, it's like that. And we will have this completely combined. Maybe we just want to join these together. Scale them a little bit so it doesn't have exact intersection. And just a small, slightly so you don't see, because you can see that the intersection here, so I'm just putting it so the render is going to be better. That's it. So that was the steps we could take in Grasshopper. I hope that it was useful for you and you can understand what I'm, uh, how to get the results. Uh, be sure to like this video and subscribe if you have any questions, uh, ask in the comment section. Okay, see you next time. Bye.